they're all for back screen. It's it's just so much movement. Run ups not rotating at all. I've been able to experience new leadership and service opportunities while making food that will last a lifetime. Find me focuses on service and giving back. We participate in Salem Ambassadors, a group which works on projects to help our Salem neighbors. We also participate in Relay for Life each year as a sisterhood to raise money for cancer research. We spend the night together on the back quad, walking for the cause, participating in activities, and even playing on the inflatable obstacle courses. Another fun activity for me at Roanoke is participating in the intramural games such as flag football and basketball. This year, my team went 6-2 and two in the flag football, and we went on to win the intramural flag football championship game for the girls. Also, there's so many fun things to do outdoors in the Roanoke Valley. When it's nice and warm outside, I love to go tubing and canoeing. During my sophomore year, I applied to be an internet communications assistant in the public relations office and quickly fell in love with my job. My boss, Whitney Anderson, has really worked closely with me to ensure that I know the ins and outs of all web communications. My favorite aspect of my job is the video production side. We produce videos just like this one. I get to be right in the middle of the production, recruiting students, sitting in on spot checks, and anything and everything that goes on behind the scenes. Sometimes I even fill in to be a part of the video. I don't want it on camera. The best part is when all the hard work is done and being able to see the final product. It's the most rewarding feeling. We found the equipment that would help produce and increase your productivity. This summer, I was able to apply the skills I gained in the classroom by participating in the Roanoke College Innovation Challenge. My team and I created a business plan for a local lady who makes chicken pies out of her basement. We were able to make pies with Lisa and work with her one-on-one -on -one to ensure that we were building the business plan of her dreams. We worked around the clock constantly researching ways to improve her kitchen, whether it was making the process more efficient or reducing her production time. It's extremely important for, from a business point because it allowed me to see all aspects of a business and how to put it together and how it all comes together in the very end. With the help and the guidance of our program directors, Dr. Mike Smith and Dr. Kevin Baker, at the end of the program, we were able to present our final business plan to real-life investors. I feel like I can tackle any obstacles that come my way. I'm excited for my future. Get involved, meet as many people as possible, but most importantly, have fun. The next four years are going to be the hardest, most important, but most enjoyable time of your life. Take advantage of it. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botata, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Team numbers, sir. All right, team numbers first for the Generals of Washington and Lee. In the first half, they were 14 of 33 from the, from the field. That's 42%. 27% from the three-point line, shooting three of 11, and three of four from the free throw line for 75%. Their rebound totals were 27, 19 on the defensive end, eight on the offensive. They did have four assists, six turnovers, two blocks, and a steal. For the Maroons in the first half, they shot 20% from the field, six of 30. Uh, but the other number that really stands out is 0 for 9 from the three-point line. 
Uh, so they continue to shoot the three-pointer, although they do not hit any. And from the free throw line, they are 8 of 12 for 66.7%. Rondo College had 20 rebounds, 12 on the defensive end, 8 on the offensive. Um, and so they're a minus 7 on, in the rebound war right off the bat. They did have four assists, five turnovers, two blocks, and three steals. So the number that steps out or stands out for me is the 20% from the field and the op- 0% from the three-point line along with the rebounds. Yeah, they certainly wanted to do well on the glass, and, the, and they wanted to prevent a lot of offensive rebounds. Offensive rebounds are even, and they did not turn the ball over particularly, just five in the first half. So, But Coach Moore, I don't think, counted on having problems getting the ball to go in the hole, and that's Ex- certainly been the story. Exactly, and, and the thing that we talked about was it's not necessarily that you're missing shots because that happens in the game of basketball, but sometimes – the type of shot, you know, time and possession and score, you need to know what's going on. And a lot of times run up college, as we saw in the first half, a little quick to uh, to pull the trigger sometimes on those threes and those long rebounds are actually just the first pass in your fast break. All right, we're going to take this one-minute break. We'll be back with Billy Hicks from Cave Spring High School in just a moment. You're listening to Roanoke College Basketball on ESPN Radio. Ramblesen Imports features only the very best top-of-the-line imports and sports. Bramblesen Imports guarantees you the very best in customer care, as well as a completely satisfying shopping experience before, during, and especially after your purchase. Bramblesen Imports, 2916 Brambleton Avenue, Rome. Their business is taking care of customers. What do you want to do tonight? I'm hungry. How about we play some billiards? <laughs> I wouldn't mind playing some shuffleboard. Listen to some oh, man. Music. Hey, and I you know the dates yet of your camp? Let's go to Ford Decent Company. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's like uh, it's the second full week the county's out of school. I'm going to take like June 23rd, 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 23rd. Dathan's actually going to go to Duke with a bunch of, with a few other kids. And that's, I think, maybe the week. I hope it's the week after. Usually is. Usually mine conflicts with Tony Bennett's at UVA. And welcome back. Rick Seidel with you. And I'm now joined by K-Spring head coach Billy Hicks. And, Billy, this your alma mater is having a bit of a struggle tonight. Well, they are. They got off to a good start. They were really moving the ball well offensively. And, and they just got stagnant, ran into some di- dry spells. And, and W&L took advantage of that. One positive for the Maroons has been the rebounding of uh, one of yours, Clay Lacey. He really did. He, he, this was the first game uh, that he hasn't started. And I think he was fired up to come off the bench and, Came out there and got a lot of a lot of rebounds on the defensive end. Got the fast break started, so uh, he did a nice job. So if your team's not shooting the ball well, what are you going to tell them in the locker room? What's Paige going through as a former point guard and current coach? Well, I think you got to take it to the hole. You know, you you, you have to open up some driving lanes. I, I would love to see Logan Singleton with his back to the basket every once in a while. I think that's only going to open up his outside game. Um, you know, they did make a nice uh, pass to him in the post earlier, and he, he uh, was able to score it. He's the biggest player on the floor, and, and uh, you know, I know he's a great perimeter shooter. I had to, I had to guard against that, uh, plan for guarding against that in high school, and, and it was a nightmare. But he needs to get in there and get his back to the basket every once in a while. Well, and that's what they had been doing through early, uh, doing earlier this season, excuse me, was running the offense through Logan and having him down. Let's get the offense started from the inside and working it inside out. And we haven't seen, as you said, much of that in the ball game tonight. Let's talk about your team. What's the latest with Cave Spring? Talk about how your, your team is doing so far this year. Well, we, we got off to a pretty good start, and uh, we've lost two just heartbreakers. Uh, our last two district games, last Friday night at Pulaski, we lost at the buzzer in overtime, and, and last night uh, at Hidden Valley, we lost uh, in overtime again. So. Uh, we've had a couple of losses. We're licking our wounds a little bit today in practice, but hopefully we'll get back out there and um, you know, get after it Friday night against Blacksburg. But you sound like you're pleased with the ball club's developing overall. Well, they're really playing hard. Uh, at the end of the day, that's the, that's the thing that you want the most. We would like for them to, to play a little smarter in key situations, have that situational basketball IQ. And uh, we're doing that in stretches, but we, we're not finishing games. Every game we've played, all 14 games this year, we've had the lead late in the game uh, against Fleming, against Patrick Henry, every game we've played. And uh, we just haven't found a way to close out some of those games. And, 
and the kids are working hard. They, they haven't gotten down. They continue to learn and, and uh, just go after it every day in practice. So hopefully all that experience. We've played five overtime games already this year. <laughs> so hopefully that experience will pay off. Well, and you're playing some good competition. It's not like you're playing poor teams. Oh, exactly. I mean, you know, night in and night out in our league, is uh is just really tough i mean first of all the first thing you have to deal with in our league is every single team is well coached uh you, you go into every game knowing you better be at your best and and then we've just tried to get our kids to be prepared for you know 10 nights in january and february you got to go to the proverbial battle on the hardwood it's no blood no foul in our league and 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 you gotta you gotta be ready to get after it well, and before we let you go, let's talk about something that's important to you and that's going on around the Valley right now, and that's the fund drive to, uh, to collect some money to help a young lady. Right. We have a young lady at our school, Kendall Bain, who is uh, fighting a very rare form of, of cancer, uh, adrenal cortical carcinoma, and um, she is just putting up one heck of a fight, and we're just trying to do our very small part in trying to help her family out uh, raising some money. So we have a fundraiser through the Roanoke Athletic Club, called a dime a time and folks and, and corporations and individuals can pledge money based on how many points we score you can do a flat pledge and all that money goes directly to the Bain family and so how can people participate say they're not a member of the rack or something how do they go about contributing you can you can go to carillion.com and, and the, the fundraiser is called a dime a time the young lady's name is Kendall Bain and uh, you can there's a pledge form that you can print out right there do it right online it's very easy well, we hope for her, that things work out well for her and for her family, obviously. And we really congratulate you on the fine work you're doing to try and help the family out and uh, hope, things, hope things turn around and she comes through this okay. Right, right. We're all, we're all praying and hoping, and, and she's just a, a wonderful young lady and is, and is uh, fighting a good fight right now and, and just uh, really has inspired us every day. Well, we appreciate you taking time to stop by with us. I know you've got get back to the to the bleachers and to the family and whatnot so we'll uh we'll be talking to you down the road thanks a lot for having me all right head coach billy hicks from cave spring high school we'll take this 60 second timeout and be back with the start of the second half you're listening to rono college basketball on espn radio Ash be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. On campus, the Roanoke College Bookstore, a proud supporter of Roanoke College basketball. Roanoke College is proud to serve the Roanoke Valley for over one year. Higher education, higher expectations. Does your company need banquet or meeting room facilities? If so, have you thought of the Salem Civic Center? Maybe you should, because the Salem Civic Center can handle a small group of six or an event of 2,000. Six meeting rooms are available with special design. You're going to be a very busy person, right? To schedule your next meeting or seminar, call the Salem Civic Center at 375-3004. They have time even if you don't. And welcome back. Rick Seidel, Chuck Parker with you. And Chuck, your thoughts about this second half as we get set for action. There you go. All had right. Your, had your mic down. Hey, there. not a problem. Uh, you know, second half, much like Coach Hicks is, was, was talking to you, you know, Roanoke College needs to just go back and, and do those little things that they had been doing, you know, cutting to the basket, slashing, um, you know, slowing down just a little bit. You know, that's something that they could do, uh, you know, secure those rebounds and, you know, if you're not shooting the ball well, maybe you need to take, uh, you know, better shot selection. And, and I liked what he said about Logan Singleton, you know, being able to get into the block and with his back to the basket and make some moves, and that will actually open up things that are going to happen to him uh, on the perimeter. All right, it'll be Roanoke basketball to start the second half. General's showing some full-court man pressure, and Buchanan will dog Humphreys across the timeline. Roanoke left to right in the second half. Kessler... High on the left side. 
Goes right side for Humphreys. And Plinsock crossing under the basket, almost bumps into Kessler. Kessler right side to the rack, foul called as he goes strong to the basket, and that's what you want to see. And once again, that's, that's what we talked about just a few minutes ago where Humphreys takes the ball, gets to the middle of the lane, and draws the defenders and is able to find Kessler on the right side. Kessler getting fouled, going to the line for two. So Kessler back to the free throw line. Two for two so far. Roanoke down by 14, make it 13. And what Roanoke's going to have to realize is there's no you know, 12, 13, 14 point plays. You just got to chip at it. You got to get stops and you got to get some good scores. Whitaker goes to the bench. Atkins comes on for him. Second free throw. In and out. Rebound tipped around by Hamilton, kept alive. Singleton can't bring it in, and it'll be Atkins in the far corner. 34-21, just underway second half. McDonald in the left corner against Amponsa. Roanoke opening man-to-man. -man. Kessler out front against Atkins. Forces him to give it up. Kimberly gets it down low right against Singleton. Drives on the baseline. Give it up to I. Left side, 13-footer, swish. Nice job by I of creating space to be able to shoot, not going to the basket and clogging up the lane, but actually stepping to the baseline for the short jumper. Generals by 15, one minute gone by in the half. Humphreys to Imponsa on the back cut, loses the ball out of bounds. I think that's the right idea, being overplayed, using the general's uh, aggression, uh, aggressiveness against them, just stepping on the line. You also get the feeling the slower this game goes, the more it favors Washington and Lee. Yeah, going to grind it out. Like we said, someone, you know, Washington and Lee being able to take care of the basketball and getting good movement. McDonald misses an open layup as he lost Amponsa on the screen out top. Amponsa at the other end drives around. Kimberly lays it up and in. Attacking the basket. That's what we said. Quasi Amponsa. That's what his game's all about, not selling for the jumpers. 36-23, minute and a half played in the second half. They do a lot of those handoffs off the ball screen. Atkins left corner, three, yes! Kessler closing out hard. That's a dagger. Atkins now with eight. And what those dribble handoffs do is it puts you in a position if you're the defender, do you switch or do you stay? And it's gonna be a mismatch if you switch, big on little. Kessler drives the middle, goes to Humphreys over on the left side. Bounce it to Hamilton, right side from 18, that's short. Singleton tips the rebound but can't bring it in. Here comes McDonald the other way. Renner Kyle's getting their hand on a lot of tips for the rebounds but not being able to secure them. Eye left side, back in Hamilton down, comes to the middle, dumps underneath for Kimberly for the slam as Singleton had come to help. And as the ball dropped, no one on the wing on the back side stepped down to help. Largest lead of the game at 18, 41-23, 17-25 to go in the game, and not the way you want to start the second half if you're Rono. Humphreys, give and go, and they're gonna call an offensive foul on Humphreys. And I'm not sure who, who drew that charge, I think maybe Buchanan. It was Buchanan underneath, stepping in on the cut. Humphreys gets his second personal. Buchanan comes out, McLean comes in. Generals in control of this ball game, 41-23. And the thing with Washington and Lee, they're not gonna take quick shots. They're gonna to continue to grind it out. Good uh, possessions. Eye in the left block, working on Hamilton. Can't get free, good defense. Send it out top to McDonald. Gets a screen left, Humphreys goes through it. And now McDonald looks top of the key for Kimberly. He'll take the three. That's no good. Rebound Humphreys. Nobody else underneath. Not the shot I think Adam Hutchinson wanted. Kessler drives, dishes, Singleton, reverse layup, missed the shot. I think he spent a lot of time concentrating right there on the defender to see where he was at instead of just putting the ball in the basket off the glass. Nice drive and wraparound pass by Kessler. McLean around Humphreys, right side, pull up jumper. Kessler helps, no good. Rebound Hamilton. Ahead to Amponsa, right side. Quasi looks to drive middle, kick it out. Kessler thinking about a three, won't take it. They'll set the offense. Amponsa, top of the key, drive, dish, Humphreys, left side from 15, yes! 
A little reverse action there. It's usually Ethan Humphreys driving into the middle of the paint and kicking to M. Pansa. Roll reversal ends up giving Roanoke College two points. 16 minutes to go in the game. 41-25 Generals. Kimberly out front. Hands off to McDonald against Humphreys. Now it's Adkins. Pull up jumper. Driving hard to the right. Way off the mark. Rebound Kessler. And it goes off of Kessler's head. Goes off of I's head. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Roanoke ball. Once again, like we said, with Washington and Lee's offense, with the dribble handoffs and the ball screens, it makes the big guys have to guard the perimeter, either on the hedge, on the switch, um, or actually staying at home. And if they stay at home and they don't switch, then you got the, the, the guards getting caught up on that screen for the curls. Humphreys against McLean brings it into the front court. Kessler now head of the lane, looks to drive, bouncing the ball to Amponsa on the wing as the ball kicked. It'll be Maroon basketball. Lacey's going to come in for Kessler. Billy Hicks was talking about getting the ball inside to Singleton. We really haven't seen that at all in the second half. No, you haven't. We haven't seen it at all. Echo now in for Singleton. Echo with the ball right side. 12-foot jumper in and out. Rebound. Foul called against Hamilton, I believe, coming over the back. That will be first personal on Jack, second on the team. McLean up the floor against Amponsa. Adkins on the left wing has, has it down inside to Whitaker against Hamilton. Goes baseline, off balance shot, drops, and off balance, falling down, jump hook, goes in. But what he did is get the basketball on the block and get himself under control, survey the scene, and then make his move. Lead back up to 18. We break 15 minutes to go, and we have a foul. And I believe that's going to, to 23 Atkins. Yep, it's 23 Atkins. Trying to bump the cutter, stay, step in, in, in the path of the cutter. It's his third foul. Right baseline, Humphreys into Echo. Echo's jump hook off the window and good. Nice move by Daniel Echo, securing the basketball and a little jump hook off the glass. I like the way he took his time. Exactly. Once again, securing the ball and just seeing what, what the defense is going to give you. Gill takes a three from the right side, hits the net but not the rim, and Whitaker saves it between his legs into Amponsa's hands. Looked like a tennis player hitting the ball between his legs. Amponsa, three from the right side, in and out. Rebound to Gill. We've seen about three or four of those shots tonight. Just been in and out of the, of the hoop for run at college. Atkins, three, left side, bullseye. And I'm sure Coach Hutchinson is talking about that's a good shot, bad shot. If it goes in, it's a good shot, but... Awful quick with a with a lead. R Roanoke is 0 for 10 from three-point land in this game. And Kimberly picks up his second personal foul away from the basketball. Ramirez is going to come in and get Amponsa. 14.08 to play, 46 to 27. Largest lead of the game at 19 for the Generals. This was a one-point game halfway through the first half. Rono continuing to struggle from the field, shooting just 24%. Humphreys trying to find someone, throws it out top to Ramirez. Brings it over to the left side against Gaeta. Got a mismatch size-wise with Lacey in the post. Lacey steps out to get it behind the arc, puts it on the floor, spins baseline, left side, loses the ball, gets it back, and gets called for steps. But he got excited seeing the smaller player, Washington Lee, coming over and giving the double. And we have a timeout called. 46-27, Washington and Lee on top of Roanoke. Under 14 minutes to go in the ballgame. We'll step aside and be back in 30 seconds on the Maroons Radio Network. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com.
from the Bass Center as the Maroons trail 46-27. 13.52 to play in the ball game. Things do not get easier for the Maroons as this Saturday they will be taking on the number two team in the nation, the Marlins of Virginia Wesleyan down in Virginia Beach. Always a tough place to play. Yeah, rare have been the W's for the Maroons down at Virginia Beach. And talking to Coach uh, Winfield before the game, he says, you know, this is a team when he has scouted them and seen the tape, he said they are legitimate. They can definitely, they can play. Gill will bring it into the offensive zone against Humphreys. Roanoke's been man-to-man -man the entire half. They played some 2-3 zone the first half. Barrett now out there with Echo, Lacey, Ramirez, and Humphreys for Roanoke. Whitaker, right elbow, bounce it across the way to Buchanan. Down in they go to Gilfillan against Echo. Kick it out. Gill, three, good. That's, that's, what, good, that's actually pretty good defense by Roanoke College. You know, contesting the shot, doubling down by Ethan Humphreys, and then coming out and, and getting a hand up. But sometimes, you know, good shooters make a lot of shots. Five for Gill. Well, and that's what you wanted. You were thinking Roanoke would be doing with Logan Singleton. Exactly. That's, that's what we thought the game plan would probably be. Humphreys will drive right, get picked up, and throw it out front to Barrett for a jumper that's off the back of the rim long. A little flat from Zach Barrett. Uh, that's his shot. His shot is just <laughs> always flat. Uh, You've been to, you are a Hidden Valley player. That's it. He was one of mine. Buchanan drives right side at the other end, has a shot blocked out of bounds. I believe that was Ramirez getting it from behind. It will be general basketball. And I think Coach Moyer probably told the guys at, at the timeout there, you know, there comes a point you're just going to have to uh, – to buckle down and start playing defense and still you know, give effort no matter what the score is. Don't play the score, play the game. Generals by 22, under 13 to go. Burnoak has yet to win in conference play. They're 0-3. Buchanan drives around Ramirez, who fouls him from behind. We've seen him get beat on the dribble a few times in this game. And what Roanoke's going to have to do is, you know, you can give ball pressure without getting chest to chest. You, know, you can play position if you, if you get, you know, three, four feet away and you have your arms extended. That's good ball pressure. And you get close enough still to start the five-second count. Exactly. Buchanan, the lefty, in and out on the first free throw. Yeah, you can definitely make people uncomfortable without, you know, getting inside their shirt. There, def there is a time where you're wanting to be, you know, chest to chest, full denial. But uh, in the half-court setting, you may have to, you know, just play position. And the 70% free throw shooter makes one of two, 50 to 27. The lead continues to grow. Bruno continues to struggle to get the ball in the hole. R left uh, right elbow, it's Echo looking for cutters. Goes to Amponsaw in traffic, bad pass. And it goes out of bounds, fortunately, to the Maroons. And that's where Echo, I think, the more he develops as a player, is going to be able to know that he is the eyes of Quasi Ponsa there on the cut. He's got to see that the defender is going to be there. And Ponsa between the circles drives against Gill, ducks underneath left side, shot up and in. Tough shot, drew a little bit of contact, no foul called. He's got nine points so far in the game. Leading score for the Maroons. Gill left side off the handoff, drives left side, floater no good, rebound Lacey, give to Amponsa. He's going to push it ahead. He's got Ramirez on the other side, finds him, layup, yes! Nice fast break by Roanoke College. Ramirez really flying down the left side of the basketball court. Quasi finding him for the easy two. 50 to 31 now. Gilfillan, head of the circle. Bounce it down low right for Whitaker against Barrett. Backs him in, leans in, shot good. That's just a mismatch. Size and athletically for Zach Barrett, that's a tough guard. Six points for Whitaker, 52-31, 11.30 to go. Right corner, Ramirez fakes the three, drives around Buchanan, dumps it for Echo underneath, and he lays it home. And Rona getting some shots inside by, by their athletic ability once again, being able to drive and find the open man. Buchanan against Ramirez, getting a hand on the ball but can't take it away. Gata now with somebody covering him top of the key, can't get the shot, goes to the foul line for Gill's jumper and he spins it in. Gill has hit two baskets, two shots in the second half. He's got seven points. Washington Elite content to just run those ball screens and those dribble handoffs to the middle of the floor. Buchanan knocks the ball off the sideline from Ramirez, 10.50 to go and we have 
a line change. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. McLean, McDonald, Kimberly, Atkins, and I return for Washington and Lee. Fifty-four thirty-three. Our score. Ramirez has McLean draped all over him. Goes to the right elbow to Echo. He'll drive, pull up, put it off off the glass, and score. And that's twice he's gone to the right side with a little jump hook off the glass. That's a, that's a nice little move for the big fella. Six points, all in the second half. Atkins around Barrett. Foul called. Ramirez comes over to help and picks up the personal foul. That's his second. Call that his third personal. That was on Ramirez. Yeah, I had him for. You have him for three? Yeah, I no, I didn't, but I believe the PA announcer. Ah. With the official scorebook. Yeah, I, I trust you. McDonald out front drives right, leans in, put it up. It rolls around the rim, won't go, but he'll go to the line. And once again, Washington and Lee getting that cut off of the elbow to the basket. Being able to put Roanoke at a little bit of a disadvantage. And Ponsa picks up his third personal at the 10-19 mark. 54-35, Generals. He hits the first. Now two for three from the line on the game. And misses the second one. Nice rebound by Echo. He's having himself a nice ball game in there. Amponsa crosses over, double teamed, has it taken away by I. Ramirez sprinting back, so is Amponsa. Nice to hustle by Quasi Amponsa to get the back tip, not giving up on the play. But it will be Generals basketball. That's the kind of hustle you like to see, you know, 20 point game with, with 10 minutes to go in the second half, and they're still giving that type of effort. And they've got Barrett holding I on the inbounds play. That's one of those where I think Zach was given just as much as he was getting, but he happened to be the one who was uh, called for the infraction. Yep. He's got Adkins, who's got eight points in the ball game, including three threes to worry about. And he's got the ball right side in the corner for McDonald. And Ponsa won't allow the penetration. They go down low left to Kimberly. Faces, gets around Echo. Reverse layup, no, but Echo has picked up the personal foul. That'll be his third. Good defense by Echo when he initially catches it. Now he's going to have to work on his lateral movement to be able to cut off that baseline drive. You know, he did. He had, you know, good base, arms up, wide, but you're going to have to be able to guard laterally in the post in the ODAC. I tell you, look at him. He's out there with hands on hips and his jaw hanging loose. He's tired. Kimberly cans the first one. But he's get, But I tell you, you know, I know if, if you were to ask Coach Moore, he's, he's giving, you, giving you some good minutes here. Yep. Just under 10 minutes to go in the game. Kimberly swishes the second one. Washington Lee, an outstanding free throw shooting team, leading the league over 70% from the line. And nearly throwing it away in backcourt is Barrett. Ramirez not coming to meet the pass either, and McLean nearly stole it. It goes yeah. out of bounds to the Maroons. That's a couple people at fault. You, you have you know, the cross-court pass that you don't want to make, but you also have no one flashing to the middle to give Zach an outlet to the middle of the floor. Into Ramirez, sprinting down the floor, has a three on two, goes to Echo, puts it on the floor, misses the layup, and Barrett keeps it alive. Can he save it? No, but it goes out of bounds to the Maroons. And how do you like the big fella running the floor there? I, I like the big fella running the floor, but what I really like about it is when he caught the ball, he jump stopped to get himself under control. And as a young player, if you have someone that can do that, that's, that's a good fundamental skill. And that's something that, you know, over the course of the, the next two, three years, he's going to be able to catch that, control it, good power dribble, and uh, probably put it in off the glass. But nice job by, by Daniel Echo of getting up and down the floor. Subs for the Maroons. Ramirez puts it in play to Amponsa. He's out there with Singleton, Went, and Hamilton now. Amponsa, three from the right side, long. Rebound goes out of bounds to the Generals. 9.34 right. to go. And I think Roanoke's still 0 for I the, believe uh, that's 0 for 11 from the beyond three the three-point line. Yeah, that's 0 for 11 now. I outside three, left side. And Ramirez steals the ball from McLean out front, and McLean fouls him as he goes the other way. 
Nice play by Ramirez, quick hands. Yep. Rather sparse crowd on hand tonight as classes won't be resuming until Monday here at Rono College. Rather quiet gymnasium, of course, when you're down by 22, it's quiet usually anyway. <laughs> 9-19 to play in the game. Singleton to the basket, layup won't go, gets his own rebound, follows it in. McDonald tried to step in and draw the charge. Ref did not blow the whistle, and Singleton has his first basket of the second half. He's got eight points. Yeah, I think that's a good piece of officiating by Bobby Walker, not, not bailing him out. McLean at the other end against Wendt, goes underneath the rim, comes out on the right side and lays it in. Six points for McLean, 59-37. And Ponsad driving left baseline, cut off by McDonald. Ramirez will bring it into the left corner, looking for a post player, goes to Amponsa, fakes the three, drives right side, all the way to the rack and lays it in off the glass. And once again, like we said earlier, that's Amponsa's game. Catch it on the perimeter and use your quickness to get to the basket. He's got 11 on the contest. Ball's loose at the other end, picked up by Singleton, knocked free on the pass, trying to find eye backdoor cutting left side. Ramirez driving left baseline, had his, right, his left foot on the sideline. So it's the turnover for Roanoke, their 10th of the ball game. And we have a timeout called with 8.18 remaining in the game. 59-39 generals in control over the Maroons. We're back in 30 seconds on ESPN Radio. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. And welcome back. Rick Seidel and Chuck Parker with you from the Bass Center here in Salem. 8-18 remaining, 59-39. Washington and Lee, they were up at the half by 14, have now pushed that lead out by six more. Moving right to left, Generals into the front court. McLean out there with Atkins, Gata, Kimberly, and McDonald. Foul called on... Couldn't see the number, Chuck. 23, McDonald, I believe, on the moving screen. Adkins. Adkins, excuse me. Yeah, That's on the moving fourth. screen. Four fouls on Adkins. He comes out. Whitaker returns. He went to set the, the ball screen and, and didn't get, you know, didn't, didn't come to a jump stop. Roanoke across midcourt with the ball left to right. Ramirez out front. Gets gate on him on the switch. Goes to Hamilton at the foul line for the jumper. Good. Nice offense by Roanoke, not forcing anything, but using some screens. Hamilton coming to the middle for the short jumper. Gata against Went, 42 covering 42. They go into Whitaker, ball's tipped away, and Gata knocks it out of bounds, knocks Humphreys on his belly. No foul called, it will be Generals basketball. We could hear Humphreys hit the deck yeah. from up here. That was, that was pretty good contact. I know Coach Moyer at the scores table wondering, you know, still fighting for his players. Inbounding left baseline, get into McDonald, catch, shoot, and short. Rebound tipped around, saved by the Generals into Hamilton. Lead pass for Ramirez left side. Pulls it out, gives to Hamilton. Lob into Singleton. And we've got a whistle. I think it's going to be a holding foul. As Singleton was being fronted and was, yep, Kimberly's going to get called for the, the foul. His third is Singleton had him sealed. It was yeah. a nice pass from Hamilton. Yeah, Logan did a, an excellent job of sprinting the middle of the floor, but not going to the block to post up. Actually starting to post up around the free throw line, and then as the defender comes, let him push you down to the spot. That way you're not giving up, you know, six or eight feet. And, and uh the defender there just trying to hold on for dear life. They lob into Singleton. He misses the layup off the baseline inbounds play, but is fouled by Gilfillan. So uh, Logan will go to the free throw line. It's Gilfillan's first. Seven team fouls against each ball club. 
broke from the free throw line, 63% as a team. Singleton, the best free throw shooter on the team. Pinballs in the first free throw. Give him nine points on the game. He is five for five from the line. 23 points against Hampton City, shooting nine of 13. Makes the second one also, so he's in double figures with 10. He's got 10, Hampton saw with 11 to lead the Maroons. 59-43 with 7.20 to go. You know, they get this thing under 10 by five minutes to go. It, it could become interesting. It could become interesting. Back door is Gill. Nice help by Singleton. Humphreys fighting through the screen. Now out front to Buchanan. General starting to run some clock here, Chuck. Yeah, smart play by by Washington and Lee, not taking anything too quick. Whitaker drives, spins in the middle, scores over Hamilton and draws the foul. That's just an athletic play. Very athletic play to be able to get your body and, and turn, you know, get the defender leaning one side and spinning back. Hamilton picks up his second personal foul. Whitaker, his eighth point. And Whitaker will go to the free throw line for the old fashioned three point play opportunity when we come back. Timeout on the floor, 6.55 to play. 61-43, Generals on top of the Maroons. We're back in 30 seconds on ESPN Radio. If you would like to sponsor this program or advertise on Valley Vision TV, call us at 540-397-1051 or email to sales at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. And welcome back. Rick Seidel rejoining you. 61-43, WNL in control of this ball game. 6.55 to play. Roanoke's next contest will be Saturday afternoon down at Virginia Beach as they'll be taking on the number two team in the nation, the Marlins of Virginia Wesleyan. Game time, 2 o'clock, will be on the air at 1.45 with our pregame show. My buddy here abandoning me this weekend. <laughs> My road warrior compadre. Yeah. Duty calls and, uh, and other areas of employment. Uh, so I will be flying solo down at the beach. But I will have my headphones on listening to the sweet voice of Rick Seidel. <laughs> right. <laughs> the stylings, the athletic stylings. Yeah. Smooth, sultry yes. sounds. Went, Hamilton, Amponsaw, Humphreys, and Singleton for the Maroons. Whitaker at the line for one shot here. Out there with I, Gilfillan, Gill, and Whitaker. General showing some pressure, just probably just trying to make Roanoke use up some time. Yeah, just token, trying to make them use as much clock as possible, try to cut down the number of possessions that they're going to have to cut into the lead. Whitaker with nine. Singleton from the left side, in and out on the 15-footer rebound. Hamilton in traffic, follow is good. Jack Hamilton attacking the glass. I'm sure Coach Moyer said in that last time out, you know, fellas, we, we just have to continue to play hard and end on a positive note, try to build some momentum for this weekend. Buchanan out top, gives to Gill. Whitaker looking inside, can't find Gilfillan. Buchanan driving an amp on saw right side. Oh, right around him and in. Quasi worried about the ball screen to the opposite side. And the other part you have is on the bottom side of the defense, no help coming over. Buchanan now with five. 64-45. Amponsa drives around Buchanan and gets fouled. One and one. Yeah, this is a time if you're Roanoke College, there's little things you can work on. Boxing out, you know, your defensive positioning, your rotation on your help side. Second foul on Buchanan, under six minutes to go. You almost have to use a game like this at this point uh, in the contest as a, almost like an organized scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Makes the front end. To still work on those little things that you know you may need to, to sharpen up or polish for games that are coming down the road. 
Well, I would say finding good shots and making them would be key. Exactly. And then, you know, rotation on your defense, too, because, of, of course, when you go to Wy or to Virginia Wesleyan, they're going to catch the ball, put it on the floor, and just try to beat you off the dribble. Hamplinsaw gets them both, 64-47. Whitaker, top of the key, facing the basket against Hamilton. Hands it off to Buchanan. Hampton Saw drops behind the screen. Now Whitaker pops out left side, 15 to shoot. Gives to Gill. Humphreys again going through the screen. A lot of, a lot of handoffs, a lot of ball screen. Uh, as I drives under the basket right side, comes out on the left with the reverse layup under the basket, pretending he's Julius Irving yeah. and lays it in off the glass. Scooping it in. Hamilton drives left baseline, throw it out top to Quasi, fakes the three, dribble drive, jump stop, gives to Singleton, cutting to the basket, shot blocked from behind by Gilflin as Singleton was way under the basket, goes out of bounds to the Maroons. Kyle Bond comes in, I goes out, Buchanan takes a seat, and let's see who else has just joined the fray. Looks like Gata. Hamplinsaw drives off the glass, misses the short jumper, gets his own rebound, puts it back up and gets hammered. Very quick off the floor, quick jumper. Gilflin gets credited with the foul, his second. So Hamplinsaw returns to the line, three of four so far. Quasi at 18, his average against Hampton Sydney. Misses this one off left. Three for four from downtown, seven of eight from the line. Had five steals in the game, one shy of his career high. Five minutes even, even remaining, 66-47. Second free throw off left, so he missed both of them off to the left. Maybe a sign of fatigue, perhaps? Yeah, probably so, a little tired. Whitaker at the foul line against Lacey. Bond goes into Gata left block against Hamilton. Turns and gets double teamed. Roanoke doubling down, throw it out front. Bond drives right side over Singleton. Off the glass and down. Wow. Tough shot going to his to the right side, almost shooting it from his hip to try to get it over Singleton's length. Logan takes a long three from out front. That's short. Rebound batted around by Singleton. Lacey keeps it alive and knocks it out of bounds. Julian Ramirez comes in for Ampon Sa. Be interested to see if Quasi returns. How Coach Moyer plays this one out. His team going to suffer their fourth consecutive loss in conference play. Whistle away from the basketball. Be a one and one. Foul's going to go against the Maroons. I didn't see anything away from the basketball. Hamilton called for the hold away yeah, from the ball. Must, must have been on the on the cut. Whitaker back to the line for the one and one. Another one of the fine three throw shooters for WNL. 73%. Shorter comes in for Hamilton. So Coach Moyer is giving some of his bench players some opportunities here. You know, once again, it's kind of like I said with that uh, that controlled scrimmage. You get a chance to maybe put some players in, save some legs for later on, but also see what other guys can do. Singleton with a nice box out on Gilflin gets the rebound ahead to Humphreys. Ethan open, thinks about the shot, gives it out to Singleton, a long three, hits it from the left wing. And that's the first one, I believe, of the game. That is the first three of the game. Roanoke had been 0 for 12 from downtown until that shot. Singleton now with 13 points. A quiet 13. Yep, five shy of his season average. Gata, top of the circle. 3.45 to play, Roanoke down by 19. And see, that's what I was talking about earlier with that ball screen, you, you create that mismatch. Um. Ethan Humphreys picks up the personal foul as Devin Dillard, who has just come on for Washington and Lee, Dumped it down inside for Gata, and Roanoke fouled Gata. He will get a one-and-one -one opportunity yeah. here. Gata setting the screen and then diving straight to the basket. Got the, the mismatch, and the only thing Humphreys could do was give him a foul. Hits the first one. Six points for him. 
And WNL is trying to empty their bench here as Will Smith will come in for Whitaker. And Gilfillan goes to the bench. McLean returns to the game. So starters are all on the bench for the Generals at this point. Misses the second one. Lacey with a nice one-handed rebound, his seventh of the game. Good box out by Clay. And Ramirez drives, kicks it out to Shorter. Short on the three. Rebound, Gata. Three on two. Pass ahead, knocked away by Ramirez. Picked up by Shorter. And now we've got a scrum on the floor. It'll be a jump ball, and it should be WNL ball, I believe. Yes. 3.19 to go. 70 to 50. Generals on top. Nice hustle by Ramirez to get back. Inbound to Dillard, takes a long two from the left baseline, long, rebound Ramirez. Has shorter, finds him on the right side. Defense is back, set up the half court. Ramirez against McLean, crosses over to the right hand, gives to Humphreys, won't take the shot. Down low for Singleton, pass deflected by Smith, collected by Bond. Roanoke with their 11th turnover of the game. And then Ramirez with the steal at the other end is fouled. Getting kind of sloppy here the last couple minutes of the game. And that will be the 10th team foul, I believe, against the Generals, so it'll be a double bonus at the other end. And Ramirez, five for 15 from the line. Missed his only two attempts in this ball game. So five for 17 on the year. A pretty good looking free throw stroke. Yeah, real nice. I was watching him shoot before the game and he does a good job of getting his body square, his elbow in, good rotation. I tell you, in the crowd, I do see a lot of alumni here tonight. Maybe cocks it back a little too far, misses the second one. Yeah, I see Gerald Holmes across the way. McLean drives left side all the way to the rack. And Singleton knocks it away but hits him on the arm. So Logan picks up his first personal foul of the ball game with 2.46 to play. And I can kind of tell you a couple things. Maybe, you know, Logan not being as aggressive inside as, as you probably want your big man to be. And McLean drains the first one. He's got seven points. Yeah, we got Gerald. We have uh, Ben Betts, uh, assistant coach here for years. Ed Green. The legendary coach, Ed Green. James Penix, Dr. Parrish Butler. Oh, Parrish is here. Yeah. There's a lot of good alumni here to watch run at college. Unfortunately, not the show they wanted to see. Exactly. Ramirez drives left side, gives it out to Humphreys, top of the circle. Now it's shorter on the right side. May have gotten away with a stutter step to Humphreys, down the middle he goes, finds Ramirez left side, wide open from five feet on the baseline left and misses it long. Didn't even jump, kind of more of a set shot. Yep. McLean around Ramirez, kick it. Now it's down low to Smith, ball's loose and belongs to, let's see, they're gonna discuss it. Mike Terry and James Brown say white ball. Thacker and Stefan Vulovich come in. Singleton comes out, Ramirez comes out. Humphreys comes out. Thacker also out on the floor now. 2.12 to play. Shorter to put it in bounds. Thacker at the point against Dillard. Shorter a three from the right side, off right. Thacker fights with Echo and they lose the ball to Will Smith and the personal foul called on Lacey, I believe. So we'll go to the other end for two shots. Clay Lacey picks up his third. Under two minutes to go in the ball game and mercifully this one will be put to bed. The bad part is, is both teams have a into the double bonus with the foul. So <laughs> we could be here a couple more minutes. Free depending throw rattles around and falls off the edge for Smith. Depending on how Sloppy this gets. Hunt, uh, Maroons emptying the bench now. 
Barrett Hunter, number 12, comes in. Second free throw is good. Tyler Akers, number 23, also on for Roanoke. So Smith one for two from the line. Maroons moving the ball around the perimeter. Vulovic will drive left side, go to the basket, and make the lay-in. Seventy-three-fifty-three. Bond in backcourt against Thacker. Patrick O'Connor, number forty, has come on. Tough shot. Makes the baseline jumper. You still got guys playing hard. Hunter with the ball. Had a nice game up at Mary Washington for Roanoke. Akers drives, kicks out top to Vulovic. Bounce it down low for Echo. Cutting to the basket, misses the open layup. And Thacker tips it out of bounds. Nice pass from Vulovic off the drive. It was a nice little wraparound pass. Able to jump stop and kind of give a little head fake so the defender would rise up and a little dump underneath. Echo just couldn't finish it for two. Generals Ethan Harrell now, freshman, has come in, number 50. One minute to play. Bond driving right against Thacker is fouled as he misses the layup. After Virginia Wesley and Roanoke will have a three game week. Well, they'll be here for Emory and Henry on Monday the 16th. At Randolph, first free throw good by Bond. At Randolph on Wednesday and then entertaining Bridgewater here on the 21st. So a lot of opportunities to improve. A lot of opportunities, but as you know, in the, in the ODAC, like, like Coach Hicks said about uh, you know, his district that he plays in, you better come ready to play every night. Hunter with the ball in the right corner, 40 seconds left. And we've got a foul called on Bond against Hunter, an unnecessary, oh no. That was away from the ball. For number 52. Yeah, Jim Etling with the foul. Echo at the line, shooting two. Six points for Echo, all coming in the second half. Makes the first, he can match his career high of eight if he can make this one set against the Generals, up in Lexington, in fact. And he does. Good rotation on the basketball. Shoots it a lot like Kendrick Chittick. Yeah, almost a little bit. That wrist flick at the yeah, end. Yeah, exactly. At the other end, layup is good by number 50, Harrell. Akers gives to Thacker on the right side behind the arc. He'll drive. Left wing, actually. Out it comes to Hunter. Penetrates, pitches. Akers muscles it up. No good. Foul called. Blocking foul with 11 seconds to go. That'll go against the Generals O'Connor. And it'll be two free throws here. Akers, the 6'2 junior from Withful, makes the first. Perfect from the line on the year now, three of three. And gets the second one as well. 10 seconds to play. Roanoke still chasing on defense. And Thacker comes up with the steal, goes over the scorer's table into the WNL broadcast team. Jeremy Franklin, to talking with him before the ball game, he said, well, I'm going to go cell phone, so maybe we'll all have more room since we've got the video <laughs> equipment up here in the press box. I'll just go down by the broadcast, by the, uh, the court and do it from the scorer's table with my cell phone. And uh, has Jordan Thacker come up flying over lap. the top over, <laughs> over the scorer's table into his lap. There's the buzzer. Ball game, 79-57 is your final score. 
and Washington and Lee improves to nine and five on the year. They even their conference record at three and three. Roanoke falls to four and nine on the year. They are zero and four in ODAC play. We will step aside, be back with our post-game show in just a few moments. You're listening to Roanoke College Basketball on ESPN Radio. Lead turns into a five-point lead to a seven, and you're thinking, I need to hit a shot here to get us back in it. And then you start getting, you know, yeah. anxiety. And Why are we not going inside? I don't know. I mean, were they doing that good a job fronting? No. But the other thing was, I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, both people can be at fault here. You've, you, you're you not looking inside, but then again, how hard are we posting up inside? Yeah. And when we do, what are we getting? You know, it's kind of... We're kind of that double-edged sword. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does your company need banquet or meeting room facilities? If so, have you thought of the Salem Civic Center? Maybe you should, because the Salem Civic Center can handle a small group of six or an event of 2,000. Six meeting rooms are available with special designs for special needs, including audiovisual and sound equipment. Wow, they the ended up shooting 51% for the for game. You. After all, you're going to be a... Roanoke College has found its roof in Roanoke Valley. For over 150 years, thousands of local students have attended Roanoke College as the largest single group at the college. They have gone on to distinguished careers as cabinet officers, congressmen, judges, teachers, physicians, entrepreneurs, oh, and man. from Washington and Lee, 11 points and three rebounds for Jeremy Adkins leading the way. Three of five from beyond the arc for him, played just 19 minutes. 10 points for Larry Whitaker on four of five, shooting also had five rebounds. 10.6 rebounds for JDI, who was four of six from the floor. Uh, nine points for Kevin Gill off the bench, shot four of six for the ball game. 
Eight points for Clay McLean. Had some nice penetrations to the basket. Nice drives. Matt Gaeta, six points for the evening. Uh, five for Jev Javon McDonald. Shot just one for seven, but had a couple of assists. Did not turn the ball over, the freshman point guard. And that takes us to uh, four, five points and nine rebounds for Kelton Buchanan. Four points for Drew Kimberly. Four points for Kyle Bond. Uh, what else we have here? We've got two for Patrick O'Connor, two for Ethan Harrell, two for Taylor Gilfillan, and Will Smith had a free throw for the total of 79. On the Roanoke side, Quasi Emponsal leads the way with 13 points on 5 of 14, shooting, missed all four of his three-point attempts, shooting over 50% from beyond the arc coming into the ballgame. Logan Singleton had 13 points and five rebounds, but was just three of 11 from the field, did make all six of his free throw attempts. And for the Maroon, scoring drops down now. Daniel Echo ties his career high with eight points. Um, and then we see five for Adam Kessler, who got the start tonight. Five points for Jack Hamilton, shooting two of five. Uh, three points for Julian Ramirez. And two points for Ethan Humphreys, who had three assists on the game. Two for Jordan Thack Thacker, two for Stefan Vulovic. Uh, and two for Zach Barrett, and Tyler Akers had a field goal, a couple of free throws late for the total of 57. And the team numbers uh, look somewhat similar to halftime. Oh, they do. Uh, Washington and Lee, the generals for the game, uh, shot 51% from the field, 29 of 57. From the three-point line, they did hit 38%, 6 of 16. And from the free throw line, they were 15 of 21, 40 Three total rebounds for the Generals. 33 on the defensive end, 10 offensive. Uh, they did have nine assists and 11 turnovers, so they cut their turnovers down. We thought they were on a pretty good pace there for a while, but they did take better control of the ball and slowed it down. Three blocks and three steals for the Generals. For the Maroons, they shot 32% from the field, 19 of 59. From the three-point line, one of 15 for 7%. Uh, and once again, as we said throughout the broadcast, not only are you missing, you just continue to take those shots and one, you know, just uh, basically compounds into three or four misses and the, and the frustration happens. From the free throw line, they were 18 of 26 for 69%. So if you have anything to, uh, you know, be positive about, they are hitting their free throws when they get to the line. Uh, 35 total rebounds for Roanoke College, 22 on the defensive end, 13 on the offensive. They did have 10 assists, 11 turnovers. They did cut down on the turnover bug. Uh, which is something that we have talked about, uh, you know, this season of them needing to work on. They did have three blocks and seven steals. All right, and right now we're going to bring in Roanoke head coach Paige Moyers. He's joining us up here in the press box after talking to the team. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the coach wired up here. And, Coach, before the ball game, we, you talked about a few things you wanted to see. You wanted to see... Uh, better control of the basketball, so don't turn it over. Didn't only turn it over 11 times. You didn't want to give up a lot of offensive rebounds. Didn't give up a lot of offensive rebounds. But really, the other thing you talked about was shot selection mm -hmm. and finishing plays and not going one-on-one -on -one and so on. And the offense really didn't seem to get in a rhythm tonight. Well, in the first half, we were patient, uh, but we weren't patient with good reason. I think uh, we saw the guys were passing around the perimeter. It's kind of like we're passing on the perimeter because Coach told us we need to make three, four passes and share the ball. And, and we weren't cutting hard. We weren't looking for the early things in the offense that could have been there if we just cut hard. And I think you know, we got some good shots early. They didn't drop. And then, you know, for some reason, our heads dropped. And uh, all of a sudden, you shoot six for 30 the first half, which is the lowest I can ever remember. And I'm sure we've, we've been that low a couple times before, but uh, not many times. And, uh, you know, you had your key players that are, you know, one for four, two for eight, whatever. Uh, guys are shooting. And WL took it to us. Uh, I think in the second half, what I'm most disappointed is in the second half, they basically ran a layup drill because we would not guard them and get our feet down and move our feet and we're down. And uh, to, you know, to me, we accepted that, you know, I mean, they're, just, they're, they're on tonight, we're not. So I feel sorry for myself and, uh, you know, it's just ridiculous to see. And they're good guards, but they're, they're driving and shooting layups because we, uh, you know, we, we, we gave in because it was a bad night for us. Well, and... This, uh, I mean, it's it's always tough to do this. What what are you, the team's reaction? To, I mean, um, where where are things down? What's the where do you think the emotional tenor is right now with yeah. the ball club? It'll be all right. I mean, they're good kids. I've got really good kids, and they've worked hard. I, I haven't 
We've got no complaints about our work ethic. I think our toughness, and then we put the, the main thing we put on the board tonight, this is going to go to the tougher team. And uh, that was WNL tonight on both ends of the court. And, and we, you know, they, they just played more aggressive, more tough than we did. And we, we didn't see, throughout the course of the season, you've wanted to work inside out, run the offense mm -hmm. through Logan a lot. We didn't really see so much of that tonight. Was that by design? No, I mean, uh, Logan, you know, they're going to bang and push Logan, and uh, I think they took advantage of his, you know, willingness to come outside and step outside easily. I mean, we put Daniel in there, and we got things in the post. And that's why I, sh I showed him at halftime. I said, hey, how can Daniel get the ball in the post that easily and score, and you're not able to do that? It comes down to, you know, are you going to sit a little harder and try to get in the low post? And we got that out of him this year. We had, that's the one thing. Logan's had a good year for us, but we haven't been able to get – a post game out of him yet. And even when we did get the ball in the post a couple of times, he had the ball taken from him or missed an easy shot or two. And, again, his confidence was down. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he needs to pick us up. He's a senior in that situation. Well, coaches will say they have a tough ball game coming up. They like to say it's an opportunity. It is. And you have a real opportunity coming up Saturday afternoon. Got the number two team in the country. And uh, Wesleyan is beating the pants off everybody. I know they won by, like, like 52 points or something on uh, Sunday against Haverford. Uh, they're playing great basketball. They play consistent basketball. And they lost their first game of the year, and after that, they've been lights out and played their tails off and beaten some really good teams. And uh, you know, I, I know I got good kids. I know they'll work hard. I mean, we're gonna come in here at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We're gonna get them up early. We're gonna look at this tape and try to digest it. And I think uh, they'll be surprised on some of the things they'll see because they're kids that have worked hard. We've been a team that's we've reacted well to uh, teams playing aggressively against us, like in Mary Washington. They came at us and played hard, and boom, all of a sudden, hey, we've tied it up. we got a chance to win the game. At the end of the game, it's a, a team that's having a really good year. Uh, tonight, we didn't do that, and uh, that's the first time we haven't done that. Hampton Sydney, hey, look, they're going to blow our doors off. They're up 20. All of a sudden, we've got to cut to five in the second half, and we made a game of it, and uh, that's been our, our modus operandi so far, and it wasn't tonight. That's disappointing, especially in a rivalry game where you're playing Washington Lee, who is uh, – you know, a, a very solid team, but our rival. All right. We appreciate you taking time to stop by and talk to us after a tough game tonight. Look forward to yep. better things to come this weekend. Thanks. All right. Roanoke head coach Paige Moore will take this 30-second timeout be back to wrap things up from the Bass Center. You're listening to Roanoke College Basketball on ESPN Radio. Does your company need banquet or meeting room facilities? If so, have you thought of the Salem Civic Center? Maybe you should, because the Salem Civic Center can handle a small group of six or an event of 2,000. Six meeting rooms are available with special designs for special needs, including audiovisual and sound equipment. The Salem Civic Center handles all the preparations for you. After all, you're going to be a very busy person, right? To schedule your next meeting or seminar, call the Salem Civic Center at 375 And welcome back. Rick Seidel rejoining you from the Bass Center as we get set to head out here as Roanoke falls to Washington Lee, 79-57. to 57. Uh, The Generals improved 8-5 and five overall, excuse me, to 9-5 and five overall in the year, 3-3 three and three in ODAC play. Roanoke drops to 4-9 and nine on the season and 0-4 and in conference action. Maroons' next ball game Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock against Virginia Wesleyan down at the Batten Center in Virginia Beach. We'll be on the air at 1.45 with our pregame show. Hope you'll join us for that ball game as the ODAC season really ramps up here in the next, uh, over the next couple of months. And as we head out, we need to thank, thank uh, some folks. First of all, from Washington and Lee Sports Information Director Brian Laubscher, play-by-play uh, -play announcer Jeremy Franklin giving us some tips before the ball game. Also appreciate his help in... Of course, head coach Adam Hutchinson on the Maroon side, sports information director Brad Moore, head coach Paige Moyer. Our producer for this evening's ballgame has been Miss Ashley Scammerhorn. Color commentary provided by Coach Chuck Parker. I want to say a special thank you to Billy Hicks for joining us at halftime as well. And on behalf of the entire ESPN broadcast team, this is Rick Seidel. Hoping you've enjoyed listening to Roanoke College Basketball. And until Saturday afternoon, stay dry, everybody. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>